Hi, this is video four of six on NMRs, and it's uh, molecules to NMRs. So, well, not exactly, because I'm going to make this a little bit harder for you, but it's going to be better for you in the long run. So, let's say if I give you this um, chemical formula, I want you to first get the molecule from it, so you can pause your video if you know how to do that. If not, um, we'll use degrees of unsaturation here. So the, the formula for uh, degrees of unsaturation is just the degrees of unset is equal to 2 plus 2 times the number of carbons plus the number of nitrogens minus the number of hydrogens minus uh, the number of halides in our molecule, that are represented by X. And halides are just fluorine, chlorine, bromine, IV. Okay? And um, let's see. Okay, so pause the video, try this out, and uh, tell, me, tell me what you get. Okay, so hopefully you guys got this. 2 plus 2 times 4, because there's 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons, 0 nitrogens, 8 hydrogens, you add it up, divide by 2, you should get 1 degree of unsat, right? So, uh, and let, let me just also go over this. Uh, 1 degree of unsat, degree of unsat, can be either, can be either a double bond or a ring structure. So maybe like, uh, a square cyclo um, butane or cyclohexane, which I'm sure you guys have seen before. Okay, these are just one degree of unsat. Two degrees of unsat will be a triple bond. But yeah, triple bond. All right, so you got one degree of unsat there. So that means that somewhere in our um, chemical there must be a double bond. So let's draw our molecule out, and then um, it goes from end to end. So let's do this. So we know we have carbon. It's one to three hydrogens here. There you go, there you go. And that carbon's bonded to another carbon. And then we have a parenthesis that just means that this atom is bonded to the previous um, um, atom. So you have an O. And then you have another O. This guy is bonded to the carbon. And then you have a CH2, CH2, and you have CH3. Okay. There you go. And then, let's see, that's our basic molecule right now. You might think that something looks a little weird right here because this carbon only has three bonds, and you're right, good catch. Uh, it, should have, it should technically have a positive charge here, and then this oxygen uh, should have a negative charge. But before you move on, it's good you spotted this weird thing here. If not, it's okay. We found there's one degree of unset, so there can be either double bond or ring. Um, Usually on a test, they'll tell you if, it, if it's cyclic or not. So, but I didn't tell you here. But we have our structure here, and it needs a double bond, because that's a degree of unset. So that goes right here. And then everything will be um, electrically satisfied, and there won't be a charge in our molecule. OK, so now let's actually go from molecules to NMRs. OK? Um, what I, okay since we're doing that, I'll show you guys the shifts. By the way, if you don't understand the chemical shifts and like the basics of an NMR, you should look at my my uh, videos one of six and three of six of NMRs. They cover why the chemical shift numbers go up, shielding, and all that, and equivalent hydrogens. So if this doesn't make sense to you. You want to go back and check check those out. Okay. So uh, let's do these hydrogens here because they're the farthest away from other hydrogens. So their chances of them seeing splitting is not that high because they're probably not three bonds distance away from hydrogen. So, but let's check. So one bond, two bond, three bond, four bonds, five bonds, it's way too many bonds. No way there's any splitting going on there. Uh, are these guys equivalent? Let's see. Um, actually, backtrack a little bit. You want to first get your equivalent hydrogens first. So that's video two of six if you don't know what that is. Um, if you watch video two of six, then you should know that these hydrogens, I'll label them as HA, they're all equivalent. Because if you didn't watch it and you think that this guy is closest to the O, right? As opposed to this guy, which is farther away, it's not true because they're constantly spinning. Okay? An example over here, let's say this is the carbon and the carbonyl, carbon bonded to two ox uh, carbon double bonded to oxygen, that's called a carbonyl. It's right here. Uh, your bond is spinning constantly, so all three hydrogens are gonna be in the same environment eventually. So they're all equivalent. And they're going to be equally deshielded and have around the same chemical shift. So that's HA. Uh, let's see. These two hydrogens, 
uh, is HB right here because they're not equivalent to these guys because they're closer to the to the electronegative um, atom right here. There, because HB are one bond, two bonds away from the O, and these guys HC, they're all equivalent because once again they experience the spinning thing that I was talking about. Uh, so these guys are one bond, two bond, three bonds away from the O. So they're going to be um, what shielded or deshielded compared to these guys. That would be shielded because they're farther away. So okay, so we have that. Now we can use our shifts by checking out from our shift tables. You guys should have that on the test. If not, then you're going to have to ask your professor. Okay. So, HA. So, what we do is it's not being split by anything, so that means that it's just going to be one peak, meaning that it will be something like this um, one peak, no splitting. As opposed to like um, this doublet. I mean, not doublet, this is the quartet. But let's see, HA. So we have to, you look at your table of chemical shifts and you find which hydrogen example looks closest to what you have here. So I already done that for you, so just to make it a little easier. So these hydrogens, they're one bond, two, well, let's see, they're one bond, two bonds away from a carbonyl, and that's this right here. Because this is technically a carbon, it's a carbon. So these guys are right here, carbonyl, and then, and then, okay. So, Chances are the three hydrogens here, they're going to have a shift at either um, somewhere in the range of 2.0 and 2.2, depending on how shielded or deshielded they are. Okay, so right now, let's make a peak. And if you watch my previous videos, you'll know that the height of the peaks are di directly correlated to the number of hydrogens they represent. So three hydrogens here. So I'm going to make that peak about this high. And it's going to be a singlet. So H and we'll label that up here. Okay. And then let's do HB next. So HB, this guy is probably going to be uh, experiencing some splitting because he has hydrogen neighbors that are unequivalent within three bonds distance. So e each of these HBs will, will experience one, two, three hydrogens because it's one bond, two bond, three bonds, one bond, two bond, three bonds, one bond, two bond, three bonds. That's three unequivalent hydrogens. So let's use the n plus one rule. By the way, this isn't clear. Once again, it's in my previous video. So n plus 1 rule. n is equal to the number of unequivalent hydrogens. That's 3 plus 1. That's 4. 4 means that we get a quartet. And then where is it going to appear? You look in your table and find the hydrogen that matches. And that's this one here. The 3.2 to 3.8 range here. So, OK. Um, it's probably be, be somewhere over here. So let's make our quartet. And then once again, High peaks are directly correlated to the number of hydrogens, so the sum of our individual um, the peaks should be about two thirds of this peak here that represents three hydrogens. So let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, so this should be some some somewhere close to what you should get. Um, let me make this a little lower. Yeah, something like this. Because if you add if you add these up, let me just do it. If you add these up, it'll be like somewhere around here. And that's about two thirds the height. So that makes perfect sense because this represents two hydrogen versus three. So this is um, HB. I guess I'll just put two hydrogens, three hydrogens. Okay. And the last one, HC. Uh, HC is, is it split by anything? Um, okay. It's being split by HB. Because if HB was split by HC, then that means that um, HB must also be uh, HC must be also split by HB itself. And you could double check it with the distance thing. So one bond, two bond, three bonds. One bond, two bond, three bonds. And they're all covalent. So let's, do, let's use our n plus one rule again. So that's two plus one. That's the three. It's going to be our triplet now. Okay. So and then we look at our table for that. So. Um, this would be an example of RH. R just stands for a carbon chain. I'm just going to change that right now. Carbon chain. So it's really ambiguous. Kind of. Okay? Because that's a carbon chain. So it's 0 0.8 to 1.6. So it's going to be somewhere in this range here. Uh, but in this example here, we have electronegative elements here that de shield the hydrogen. So that would make it more downfield. So we're probably closer to like 1.3. 
closer to 1.6 than 1.8, uh, than 0 0.8. So let's make a um, triplet, and that that the sum of the peaks must also equal to this one because they're both three hydrogens. So let's put three hydrogens down here. Triplet. So let's do this. Okay, as we add these up, they'll be about equal, right? And if we add this, these up four, that makes sense. Two hydrogens, three hydrogens, three hydrogens. H, C. Okay, and that's all there is to basically going from a molecule to an MR. Hope this was helpful. Um, if you like what you saw here and you want to um, get updated when I make other videos for um, other concepts in Orco or biology or anything else, um, make sure to subscribe.